Southwestern family of companies welcomes you to the Action Catalyst. Each week, our diversely and amazingly accomplished guests share their insights and inspirations to help us ignite our own. So let's invest attention together to breathe, to reflect and refocus, and decisively defeat that voice we call Mr. Mediocrity. Then let's enjoy moving forward to make a positive difference in our world. Redefining Possible, the game-changing guide to overcoming barriers and accomplishing your goals, is now available in audio form on audible.com. What would happen if you escaped the familiar grind of your day-to-day life and started living out your dreams for the future? Authors Ron Alford and Dustin Hillis, both record-breaking business coaches and sales leaders in their own right, lead you down a proven path to achieve maximum impact in your own life and the lives of others with simple strategies to break through the barriers of belief and create your new, more prosperous normal. Filled with relatable anecdotes, actionable tools, and targeted affirmations, Redefining Possible will inspire you to get outside of your box and live a happier, healthier life. Hear how from the authors themselves when you download Redefining Possible at audible.com today. Learn more at redefiningpossible.com. Hello and welcome to the Action Catalyst podcast. Well, this is an exciting episode. It's finally here, the audiobook of Redefining Possible, the game-changing guide to overcoming barriers and accomplishing your goals. Co-authored by myself and my good friend and colleague, Ron Alford. The audiobook is available right now on Audible. Go check it out. And today, Ron and I are going to give you an overview of what Redefining Possible is all about. Three years ago, Ron and I met and we were just talking through common needs that our clients have. And what we have found is that the content that is found within Redefining Possible is applicable in what really people want and what people need when it comes to helping them redefine what's possible, creating a new normal, and ultimately breaking through belief barriers. Because uh, at the end of the day, we we are the ones holding ourselves back. And there's a series of things that we can all do to take our life, our business to the next level. And so that's what we're going to talk about here today. Redefining Possible isn't just one person's opinion or two people's opinion. Really, you'd have to say all of Southwestern family of companies, 160 years cumulative experience, uh, you're going to find anecdotes and stories and and examples that for those of you that sold with Southwestern 50 years ago, you'll see some things that you probably taught people that's found in that book. You'll also see uh, Ron and I are two ragamuffins that are saved by grace. And we've made a lot of mistakes in our life and learned a lot of lessons. So hopefully some of those lessons can be passed on and You can learn without going through the same pain that we had to. And also there's some success stories in there of things that we did to help take our lives to another level. And then the third piece of Redefining Possible is just the most successful people that we have met and and come across along the way and their stories and their case studies. And there is some amazing people that have redefined possible with their lives. So uh, to get us started, just a, a little bit about myself. My name is Dustin Hillis. I'm the CEO of Southwestern Family of Companies. I've been CEO for about two and a half years. Uh, prior to that, I was co-founder of Southwestern Consulting and helping run the coaching division of Southwestern Consulting. Prior to that, was actually selling door-to-door with Southwestern Advantage. The most important accomplishment is I've been married for 15 years to a beautiful woman named Kaya, and I have a daughter named Haven, and uh, so thankful for them in my life. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Ron has been a highlight of my life as well, our friendship. The first time I ever met Ron actually was 18 years ago. I was in Nashville, Tennessee. I was just a punk kid coming into Southwestern. Sports was my whole life, and I didn't know much about anything. And I remember sitting in the back room of Southwestern and hearing people teach motivational ideas. And I was sitting in the back of the room with my arms crossed, all skeptical. And uh, all of a sudden, this guy walked on stage, and they said, well, here comes Ron Alford. He's hit 
highest selling production level 70 times over his career. And within about a minute of Ron talking, I said, this guy knows what he's talking about. And I walked up front and clicked my pen and I wrote down every word he said. And he's an amazing leader and now co-author of Redefining Possible. And Ron, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're excited to have Redefining Possible here available to the world. Justin, thank you, buddy. I, I'm just trying to work on how can we give the things we've been given. You know, at the end of a day or a week, it's not the awards we hit or the things we accumulate, you know, the, the trophies, but it's, it's, it's the memories and it's being able to see an impact of something maybe you said, maybe you did and how it lives on. And so that was the, the origin of why Dustin and I started working on this book. And obviously all these years later, we've had a lot of late nights, a lot of fun. I mean, it's been a blast working on this. And then there's also been some challenges. There's been conflict because your heart is in this. I mean, this is our guts and you want to honor the stories. You know, you want to honor your family and make them proud, but you also want to honor all the people that have impacted us. And this is very personal. We share personal stuff. We share a lot of personal stories of people we know and we've studied and we've watched. And hopefully as you read it, it has nothing to do with Dustin and my stories. It's the emotion it evokes in you. It's the the feelings that create the behaviors and the, and the adjustments in your own life that allow us to get different results. It's so refreshing because every time we talk, there's a focus on how can we be better tomorrow? How can we enjoy and appreciate and be content in the moment? But yet, how can we be better? How can we sharpen? How can we, you know, really make a bigger impact ahead? And so that's definitely a lot of the theme of this book. So without further ado, let's kind of go through a preview. I want to open up with a little bit of, of an idea on the power possible. And then Dustin's going to start us off with the first of the seven strategies. And so the idea is of how to control our thoughts. There's, there's a quote that says, the cave that I fear to enter is the cave that holds the treasure. Fear holds us back like crazy. And there's something in our life that's a cave. There's a relationship that we know we need to work on. There's a business goal that we've been thinking about for years that we're, we're hesitant to really go for. You know, there's a fitness thing that we've been, that's kind of nagging us in the back of our mind. There's a spending habit. There's whatever it might be that can hold us back. And really learning how to kind of overcome that fear is so much of the theme of this book. My take is if you show me your habits, if we can look back, we'll know your results. It's that simple. We're, we're defined by our habits and our ability to adjust our habits to help us be better. And so the whole theme of this book, The Power of Possible, you know, I went for a walk this morning just to kind of get some fresh air, just thinking about, man, the beauty around us. And, and I literally can focus on how early it is or how much I've got to do today or whatever it is, or I can take a breath and focus on fresh air and focus on how joyful I am. There's so much possibility and beauty in the moment, and it's all what we choose to look at. It's what we choose to focus on. So Dustin's going to kick us off with the first of our seven strategies. So Dustin. So to get us started, we're going to hop into the first chapter of what Redefining Possible is all about. And it is sharpen your focus. It goes right along with what Ron was saying is what you focus on is what you're going to get. It's amazing. We live in a world of distraction. We live in a world where nobody wants to actually be focused. The way I know this is I had the opportunity for the past seven years to be the guest speaker at Vanderbilt University and at some of the brightest minds in possibly the world. You know, Vanderbilt's a pretty prestigious college. And I always open up each one of the speeches with two questions. The first question is, I say, by a show of hands, how many of you think when you graduate, you're going to be in some form of selling? And hardly anybody raises their hand. And <laughs> what's comical is this is the business class for Vanderbilt. So then I ask them, you know, how many of you are going to be entrepreneurs? And about a quarter of the room raises their hands. Then I say, how many of you are going to be consultants? And about 50% of the room raises their hands. It's hilarious that none of them think they're going to be selling when they graduate, where they think those skills are important. Uh, the second thing that I ask them is I say, by a show of hands, how many of you would say focus is one of your biggest strengths? Nobody raises their hand when you ask that question. You have to start there. You have to realize that focus is power. Focus is where you can harness your thoughts. You can harness the things you believe in and you can 
put your mental energy into one thing and break through pretty much any barrier that's in your way. One of the things that is so important is to realize that all the distractions in your life are coming at you from a variety of different ways, and they probably are not helping you reach your goals. One of our favorite techniques in Redefining Possible is called the RAFT technique. RAFT is really about focus. This is the very quick version of RAFT. This is the fastest I've ever taught it. R is you realize an event is actually happening. It's easy to discern that there are events happening that are outside of your control every single day. And actually, that's one of the more difficult things is for you to realize you're being distracted and that there is an event that is causing you to lose focus. The second part of RAF is to accept that the things that are happening are happening. Just go to social media and see how many people that you're close to that are not going to accept the things that are outside of their control. It's a majority. A majority of the people do not want to accept whatever it is out there that's distracting them. They don't want to accept it. And actually, you think of it, human nature is that way. Everybody loves a good excuse on why they can't focus. And so it's much better just to look at the news and look at social media and lose your focus. That's the easy thing to do. But what the champions choose to do is the F of wrath, which is focus. And what you want to focus on are the controllables. You have to control the controllables. Really, there's three things you can control. Your attitude, your activity, and your schedule. And I know many CEOs, I know many very successful entrepreneurs that say those three things they learned was the things they used forever to get through the hardest times. And then the last part of, of Raft is the T which is transform the negative event into positive momentum. And you can and you will do that when you choose to focus on the controllables. In other words, the negative events in your life become the reason why you win. The obstacle becomes the way. And that is the power of focus. And you're making a decision today. You made a decision this morning what you're focused on. That's a choice. And we get the power to choose our focus every single day. And that is how we sharpen our focus. Ron, back to you. So Dustin, the second strategy is ownership. And this is perfect segue because ownership comes right off of that. And, and it's otherwise known as taking full responsibility. And for a lot of us, that's tough. A lot of times we shy away from being accountable. We want freedom. We want to kind of be able to go our own way and, and not have someone micromanaging us. Man. Ownership is such a key foundational principle for any type of success or significance in life. Because what happens, and it's so fascinating, and for those of you that are parents, yeah, it's just the things that I talk to my three kids about. My wife and I are a blended family. Uh, I was a single dad for for many years. She was a single mom. And it's just this incredible dynamic of us trying to work with our kids and then realizing the things we work with them on about not blaming each other, not blaming you know, their situation or just blaming anything. And then are we looking in the mirror? Are my wife and I as the adults (laughs) practicing the principles that we're teaching them? And so for Dustin to talk about that, there's absolutely the first step in anything is acceptance and literally owning, you know, my fitness situation, my financial situation. So the first step is owning that 100%. If you own it with 99%, it is dramatically different that 1% makes all the difference because there's zero blame on government, situation, company, the other people. It's what I did, period. And then the second part is breathing in perspective, being able to realize, okay, I may have some some habits or my, my fitness, my finances, my business production, some relationships, whatever that's a bit off course. But perspective reminds us that that's not the end of the world. It's not as bad as it could be. It's 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 okay. And so perspective allows us to kind of stand taller and just have a renewed energy. It's literally jet fuel for your 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 life. It, it, you can take this negative situation and say, okay, I'm going to transform this into positive energy. But it really does begin with ownership. So the heightened focus, clarity of what we're going after, full ownership, full responsibility leads us to strategy number three. So in order for you to really culminate ownership and focus, you have to clarify your vision. In clarifying your vision, we would put at the top of the list, 
without a vision, you're like a ship sailing through the ocean without a rudder. And there's so many people out there who don't even know what they want. They have not clarified their vision. They are just out there being reactive versus proactive. And vision is one of those things that you have to constantly renew. Some people have outrun their vision. And they don't even realize it. Somebody set a goal five years ago, they accomplished the goal, and they're still patting themselves on the back from achieving that vision. And they haven't upped the ante. They haven't recreated a new vision. When you think of your vision and you're clarifying it, here's one thing to help motivate you for uh, making sure your vision is locked in. The strength of your vision is in direct proportion to your endurance. The other day I was on a conference call and we were putting out a new strategy and it was going to be difficult and it was involving a lot of change. And one of the people on the call said, hey, I get this strategy and I know why we need to do it, but I just got to tell you, I'm just so tired. And I didn't say this out loud, but what went through my mind was, well, do you need a nap? And then after you're not tired, then we can talk some more. Because if somebody says they're they're just so tired or they're burned out, Is the reality that they're actually tired or is the reality that there's something else going on? And I would contend that when people say I'm burned out, I'm just so tired. Gosh, I'm I'm just overwhelmed by all these things that are out here outside of my control going on in my life. That actually that's a vision problem, not an actual being tired problem. Double down on your vision. Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you here? What are you doing right now with your life to actually make a difference versus just being a passenger? What can you do to actually make a difference? There is five steps to vision mastery. One of them is focusing on your foundation. What kind of person do you want to be and what characteristics do you want to exude when other people think about you? Number two, what do you want to do? And then lastly is what do you want to have? Uh, there's nothing wrong with setting goals and the vision for things you want to actually have and accomplish. So do you want to break a record? Do you want to start a nonprofit? If you see problems in the world, do something about it. Create a program. Join the board of directors of a nonprofit that helps homeless people. But without those type of goals and those type of vision, we're just drifting. And so that's the power of vision. And that tees us up for the next step. Take it away, Ron. Yeah, so we'll segue into our next three strategies. And so these next three, I, I personally, the way my mind best thinks of them is like a muscle that can be strengthened or is weakened with use, with practice. You know, I, I obviously talk to my kids about this a lot. You want to run faster at school or my daughter doing gymnastics or my sons that want to play football or whatever the, the activity is. You have to practice getting your legs to move faster or, or for my daughter, you know, her handstands or I, I think of these next three in that manner. First of these is belief and breaking belief barriers and just stretching what we believe is possible. Obviously, anything we're going to go after, we all know the old adage, thinking big. It's just a fascinating topic. My, my wife and I have a new puppy and we were talking uh, this last weekend about we have some acreage behind our house. And we were talking about putting in one of those invisible fences so that this puppy quits going out and getting into crap that he should not be getting into. And so in other words, we need to limit where he goes. First, he might be zapped or however this thing works. Well, then very soon, he's going to be programmed to believe that he's never able to go past that line. And we all know two years from now, if we move, they don't push the boundaries. They don't even try to get past it until they maybe see some other dogs running through it, right? And then maybe they'll follow those other dogs. And it's the same story of Roger Bannister breaking the four minute mile or, you know, so many achievements and accomplishments that have happened over the history of the human race. And so this could be anything with teaching our kids how to do push ups or, or selling more revenue, whatever it is. But man, it's fun to exercise that muscle of belief. Next is to cultivate confidence. And really with cultivating confidence, that is something that is an interesting topic. Because a lot of times managers will tell us, hey, we just need to hire more confident people. We just need people that have that it factor. And the reality is you can learn to be more confident. 
And there's a lot of people, we've seen the transformation over and over and over again, where people can develop these confidence anchors and you can leverage your wins to become the next win, to become the next win, to become the next win. And so many people don't even realize or don't associate the victories they have already had are giving them the confidence that they can do more and it becomes a springboard into future successes. First, to understand the psychology of confidence, and there's three levels of confidence that you have to graduate through before you can learn how to develop true confidence anchors. The three levels are false confidence, which is you fake it till you make it. So that is where you are saying, hey, I'm going to go do something, but you have no idea how you're going to do it. And it's actually not a bad thing because when you're doing anything new, there's an element of false confidence where you're just going for it. But you want to quickly get out of false confidence. And the second level of confidence is called conditional confidence. And that's where we find most people are, and it's really hard to get out of, but you can get out of conditional confidence. Conditional confidence is where you base your confidence on results. So you might look at your income level. You might look at your pay stub, and if your income went up, you had a good year. If your income went down, you had a bad year. And that's conditional confidence. What unconditional confidence is all about is where you put all of that on a shelf, And you realize that the true confidence comes from your beliefs and your habits. And when you have unwavering beliefs and you have unwavering habits, that's when you become an unstoppable force. And so for you to realize you've been given a certain skill set and for you to lean into those gifts and realize If I form the right habits and I focus on my strengths, that ultimately I'm going to make a massive impact as long as I don't quit. That is what unconditional confidence is all about. It eliminates fear. You can literally have no fear no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on in your life. There are many, many examples, books uh, throughout time that are written about people in the worst circumstances you could imagine. Yet they have unconditional confidence and they have eliminated fear in their life because they have rock solid beliefs and rock solid habits. Yeah. And guys, how many amongst us could not use some eliminating fears? So our sixth principle is fortifying our faith. Nothing of true significance has been accomplished without extreme measures of faith. And now that doesn't mean you didn't win a trophy or win a a game or, or get the pay raise or but I'm talking something truly memorable that actually had significant value in other people's lives. And and if you look at the history of humankind, it is just such a difference maker, people that have strengthened this muscle of faith. The faith quotient in this book is when we fall on our face, we experience pain, we experience failure, we experience loss, we, we experience setback, but faith gets us through it. When you create that beautiful vision board that inspires you, it actually makes your eyes water up because you're so inspired to start that nonprofit or take your family on that trip or have that second home or eliminate that debt or whatever it is that gets you out of bed in the morning. That's beautiful. That, that can trans, that can inspire any human. Well, guess what? Next week, next month, next year, something's going to rock you. There's going to be an obstacle that tries to hold you back. And with minimal faith, what happens is you turn and you give up. We have an excuse. We just say, ah, it wasn't meant to be. And then we come up with all these rationalizations. And it's just so sad. It's such a sad thing to see in a human that does that. And I'm guilty of it. But that's why I'm trying to strengthen that muscle of faith, because that allows us to push through. If it's on that vision board, it's supposed to be on that vision. board. Nothing is coincidental. If it hit your heart enough to print out that picture and put it on your vision board, it is supposed to happen. It may not happen in the time frame you choose or hope, but faith gets you through it. Faith is what kind of keeps that hope alive. So our biggest and most important strategy is the seventh, and everything we do in the first six leads to number seven. And so Dustin, hit us with number seven. Yes, uh, the most important part is impact. At the end of the day, at the end of your life, when it's all said and done, you do get to look back at your life and see the lives that you personally impacted. 
And not only the lives that you impacted, but then the butterfly effect, the residual effect after that. See, every conversation has consequences. Every conversation has a seed being planted. And it's either a seed that's going to produce fruit or it's a seed that's going to produce thistles. (laughs) And so be a person that plants seeds that produces fruit. And when that becomes your goal, is your goal is to be a light. Your goal is to share joy with people and to, to make them feel better about themselves and who they are and what they do. Drop the mic. You'll live a fulfilled life. You will have made a difference. So one way to make impact your measuring stick is for you to pull out a clean sheet of paper and do these three things. Number one, create a mission for your life. Create a life mission statement. And if you haven't done it, it is so fun to sit down with your significant other, your family, or just friends and just say, Hey, this is a crazy idea, but let's, let's talk about what my, what our mission, what my mission is in life and write it down. What's your mission in life? The second question is, what is your vision? So once you have your mission and you understand why you are on the planet earth, what's the vision? So mission is your why, but your vision is the things you haven't seen yet. So vision is seeing into the future, the things that haven't happened but you're creating your mind's eye and you are visualizing the things you're going to do. So Ron already alluded to it. Having a vision board is a way to ensure you're making an impact. You create the visions that you have, but you make sure they're making an impact that lives into the mission of your life. And then ultimately is to create a list of values. You should have a personal list of things that you value. Because if you don't know what you value, then it's hard to have beliefs. And without having beliefs, then it's hard to have character. And without character, then you're just wandering through life and regurgitating a bunch of stuff that other people have said. So if you want character and you want to make a difference and you want to make an impact, have a set of values, then make decisions towards that. Every decision should be based on your values. What you don't want to do is make decisions based on your feelings because feelings are futile. Feelings are what come and go. Every person I know that's been married for more than 10 years has had to deal with not reacting to their feelings and making decisions based on their values. And that's what gets you through the tough times. That's actually how you make an impact is you stay the course based on your mission, your vision, and your values. So we're so excited to have you guys here uh, with us today. The content in this book, it's like a daily reminder of what it takes to stay focused, renew your faith, build your confidence, and make an impact. So if this is something that resonated with you today, go to redefiningpossible.com, get a copy or 10, And I hope you guys all redefine possible in 2021. Thank you very much. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe. To stay updated on everything that the Action Catalyst is up to, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Action Catalyst Podcast and Twitter at Catalyst underscore Action. Thanks for listening.